Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology and from time to time show you some kind of cool gadgets. And today on the show, uh, we, we're going to actually look at iPod, iPad docks. Yes, sir. We have some musical, uh, musical treats here for you. Great. I mean, part of the reason why we're doing this, it's funny, you know, it's very patronizing, I guess. Not patronizing, what's the word? It's like self-serving self a lot of the time. <laughs> you know, uh, I need one of these. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, Sean, which one should I buy? And he's like, well, let me go research it. And so now we're doing a show on Aaron, it. But this is, I'm, I'm doing your research for you on this. Thank yes. you very much. Um, so you found five different uh, docs that we're going to look at. Yes. And uh, we're going to give you the rundown of what's available, why you would want one, and uh, which ones in our estimation, is the best so far. So with that said, let's uh, take a break. And when we come back, uh, iPod Docs. What did you call it, Paul? Uh, iPod Doc Mania. iPod Doc Mania. Today on Lab Rats. Welcome back to Lab Rats. So before we get started, a quick uh, message from our sponsor. This week, we want to talk about VeriSign, one of our partner companies uh, to our uh, company, Two Cows, which, of course, owns Butterscotch.com these days. Um, and so VeriSign is a company that's trusted to run and safeguard .com and .net, right? So they're kind of one of these big, awesome companies in behind the internet that really allows the internet to function, kind of one of those hidden, you know, uh, plumbing companies. They make stuff work. They make stuff work on the internet. So if, you know, if, if I want to send an email to you, well, the, part of the reason my email get, comes, comes from me and goes to you is because Verisign is in there making things reliable and they safeguard you know, the important things that run the internet. So uh, if you want to find out what it takes to, to run .com and .net, find out at verisigninc.com slash connect. That's verisigninc.com slash connect. There you go. All, All right. right. Now you wanted to, the, I wanted to call this iPod Doc Mania. Did you have a different name for it? Doc Stravaganza. Doc Stravaganza. All right. And, and I think Paul said what? Doc. 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 Octopus. Uh, Doc. Yeah, Doc that, that's not a great one if you it's can't remember how to one. say that's it. That's right. Exactly. Poor brand Doc, name. Doc. Doc. That, that actually sounds like you're gonna wreck your iPod. That's true. That's true. So, and this, these do completely the opposite of that. They actually enhance the experience of the iPod. Yeah. So let's talk about you know why you would even think about buying a Doc. Like, what's the, why, why bother you have this thing? You can plug your headphones in. What's the point? Okay, well, I want you to think back into the day. So you used to gather around this thing that made music, and it had, like, a CD player, a cassette player, or if you're of our vintage, an 8-track player, perhaps. <laughs> and it all sat there, and this is how we listened to music. It was a big deal. It was a stereo, right? It was a, a stereo, stereo system. I mean, when, you, when, when we, we were you know, young and impressionable. Uh, you wanted a stereo. Stereo was the big deal. And it was like, what brand are you going to get? And how many components? And how big are the speakers? And do they have tweeters? And Yes. And teenagers these days don't even think yeah. about stereos. Well, there was a big shift uh, at the early part of uh, this century where uh, people started making everything mobile and digital. I mean, I guess the shift started earlier as people started getting the cassette Walkman and then the CD Walkman. And then it all went digital back in the late 90s, uh, early zeros. So uh, people took around their iPod everywhere they went and listened to their music everywhere. So a lot of people were just collecting the music on their computer and then transferring it to the iPod, and that's their music collection. Mm -hmm. So you say to, to people these days, cassettes and CDs, and they're like, hmm? oh. I don't got any. Yeah. Why would I have those? Yeah. So this shift means that we have to find a different way to listen to music when we're doing it in our house, potentially. Yeah. So some people still have the home theaters, but for a newer generation that isn't, uh, you know, they haven't grown up with those things that are the size of a, a bread box or, or a microwave oven that play their music, then they're going to want something new to replace that or to create that same functionality in the house. Right. And enter the enter iPod, the iPod dock. docks. Right. So the one nice thing that uh, Apple did when they released the iPod is to have a universal connector on the bottom of their player. So not every player that's out there has a universal connector for transferring music out there, except for maybe the headphone jack. And that can be a little bit unreliable when you're using that with an external dock. So they have something on the bottom on every uh, single device. It's called the universal connector. And you can actually connect this right here to anything that uh, you know supports it and is certified by Apple. And then you can transfer the music out the bottom and mm -hmm. charge at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the nice dual features of these docks is each of these things has that connector on the top here. And uh, you can actually plug your iPod or iPad, in some cases, into this. 
it'll charge and then transfer the information out, which makes it pretty much a dog for mm. playing your music and charging. Right. Okay, good. So, so everything that we see here today has one of those connectors, and that's really kind of the the that's the key here. That's yeah. the key piece for, of technology. With, with the world of Apple and, and the iPod, anyways, they said there's other devices out there, and you can actually use a line-in device to get a, lot, a cable to connect from your headphone jack to the uh, to the input of your home stereo or to one of these devices. You can do that, but the fact that these ones have the, the charging spot on the top is really what makes these things soar, I think. Okay, I got it. So, and just, just for, uh, to be very specific, you know, these are iPod and iPad uh, devices. The Android world really hasn't caught up with these accessories yet, although that's starting to shift. So, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, was it Philips, Paul? Yeah, Philips. So, Philips has sort of started to uh, develop, and I'm sure we see more uh, Google compatible or Android compatible yeah. devices moving forward in the next few weeks. Yeah. And part Not of the big few months and probably in a roll up to Christmas too. Yeah, and part of the big reason for that as well is the non standard nature of the way they implement it. So when you get an Android device, the charging port could be anywhere on it. It could be on the side, it could be on the bottom, theoretically it could be on the top. So there's no standard way. These ones you just flip your iPod upright and stick it in. So you've got these different sizes that we've got here. And uh, they all fit onto it in exactly the same way in the same orientation. So, Got it. all right. Well, let's just step through them then, because you have uh, with this th there's four up here, and then we have one hidden behind you, which we'll show you in a minute. All right. So, so we're gonna go right to left. Let's yeah. Let's or slide this into the zone so we can get a good look at okay. it here. All right. So right here we've got something called the Extreme Mac Luna SST. and uh, this is your standard kind of dock. Again, we showed this one earlier at the beginning. It's got the uh, the connector up here for you to put the iPod. Got the controls up here for you know uh, play and pause. You've got uh, dual alarm clocks on this. A little spin wheel here for interacting with it. In this case, it's uh, turning the uh, the light up and down, which is important when you have an alarm clock in the uh, the bedroom because you don't want this thing blasting light into your room in the middle of the night. So a lot of these things double as uh, alarms for your bedside table. Right. Most of them uh, have like FM, AM radio. Yep. They uh, have uh, alarm clocks in a lot of cases. Not everyone does, so you might want to check if this is one of the things you're really looking forward to. This one to. does? This one does. Yep. Uh, it's uh, got the ability to... Um, to wake to the, uh, your iPod, you can set a playlist in most cases on, on these docks and, and wake to a certain playlist so mm -hmm. you don't get woken up by something at random or you can wake up to FM radio. So, right. so I noticed this one is actually charging too, I don't know if yeah. you could yeah. see that before. Yeah. Right now it's, it's, it's charging oh, uh, right really now see. and this again one of the main points of it so when you're not actually playing something it'll start charging it. So, but yeah. then, then you can press the play button and then it'll wake up and start playing something. So now we're listening to uh, a, a little remix here from our friends uh, Depeche Mode. And uh, again, we can turn the volume up using this now and listen to that. And, uh, and then skip through the tracks. Generally, they, they have a remote here. So we've got the remote for this one. And it comes with all of the play controls on here. So we can flip to a different track and such. Play, pause, change our source so we can go to the FM radio, which is untuned right now, as you can hear. So anyways, you, you get the point, and you can turn it off that way too. So, um, hit it right. So anyways, it's hard to do this backwards. Source. Source, there we go. So uh, the one neat touch about this one, uh, as opposed to a lot of the other docks that are out there, by the way, this one is $129.99. It's a good deal. It's, it's not bad, it sounds okay, and, uh, and, and it does have this one neat feature. You can actually flip this one speaker off. So oh. we can actually take this speaker have this on one side of the bed and have this one on the other side of the so bed. You could be like sleeping inside yeah. the stereo zone. Right. So like if, if both you and your partner wake up at the same time, this is one way to do it, or you can listen to music at the same time. So it, it does come with this cord right here that basically attaches one to the other when you're not uh, separating it, just to keep it secure. Otherwise, you've got this huge length of wire connected to it. and. You know, it takes all the way out to a different section, right? So, and, and from the looks of it, it's just standard telephone wire. So if you want to make it even longer, you could probably jury-rig your own solution. Mm, neat. So, so there you go. That is the Luna SST, and it's I said, a little bit more flexible that way. Good. Good stuff. Okay, great. Okay. All right, what's next? So I'll put this one, try to put this one back together and tuck it away. So next up, we've got this one from our friends at iHome. 
Now, I'm excited about this one because, you know, I, I had to say I went looking for a, uh, an iPad dock uh, mm -hmm. at the Apple Store, mm -hmm. and uh, they, there's, not, there's not a lot to choose from. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Uh, this is one of the few that uh, I've seen that does uh, iPod and iPad. So this one has a bit of a, a, bit of a, a uh, adjustment uh, here so that you can actually accommodate both the iPods or the iPad. So we'll see, we'll take this off right here and it's got a little bit of a, a stand here to actually brace the iPad so it doesn't actually kill the connector. And then you put this back on like so. It's a little bit uh, hard to get this one on and off because it does wiggle back and forth, but it does give you the ability to adjust it like so. So anyways, and you see now it's charging here as well, so it can charge your iPad, play the music from it uh, like you'd expect. So. You just press the play button on the top there and it'll start to, to play what I have in my queue here, which is a big star track. And, uh, and then we uh, can just adjust the volume like such. Does it sound good? It, it does sound uh, fairly good as well. So, um, Can we push play? We uh, are pressing play. <laughs> Demo-itis. Oh, I don't like so this. So. Okay, so we are in an app. Uh, this is why, I guess, we're, we're in an app mode right now. Yeah. So, and the volume on this was uh, pushed down over here. So in this campaign, we'll now we're listening. Up. That's the, the radio, uh, other radio, and uh, I think we are in auxiliary input. So most of these also have inputs from, uh, there we go. So, and so you can turn it up and it sounds reasonably good. The problem, the problem with most of these little docks as, uh, as we uh, have seen before is they have fairly small speakers. So they sound reasonably good, but they're not earth shattering sound on most of these. So mm. you're not going to be holding a huge, huge party with most of these. Right. Uh, again, this one, uh, 139.99, has inputs on the back. Uh, and it does have the ability, uh, like we were showing earlier, I sort of got ahead of us, to, to have apps. You can download iHome apps here that will give you the ability to, uh, to go in and actually adjust the settings up here. So you can adjust your alarm times here. You can adjust uh, the mode you're in. And, is, uh, that an, is that an app, an iHome app that comes for the, uh, for the iPad? Right, yeah. yeah. So, so for the iPad or the iPhone, uh, you can just download it and uh, for free uh, in all these cases, and away you go. And what does this cost? Uh, this, the device itself, $139.99, the apps are free. So there, there's that one for setting, and then there's one for sleep. So you have the ability to set up a sleep mode here as well using this one particular mm -hmm. app. So there is a, on the high end of on this line, uh, not this particular line, but uh, from BNO, from Bang Olufsen, they have a, a product called BO Sound. I think it's eight. And it's a thousand dollar solution. Mm -hmm. I mean, as always, you know, B and O, they're fantastic devices. You're going to pay a premium. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can just put a, an image up here just to have a look at that because it's very, very cool. Um, I really wanted one of these, but when I hit, saw the thousand dollar price tag, I, I just decided that I was going to have second thoughts about it. But yeah, it's hard to justify some of these. I know that uh, there's another one from another high end uh, company as well, Bowers and Wilkins, that does something called the Zeppelin that, again, is very expensive, sounds very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, you look at the price and it's, it's hard to justify unless you've really got a lot of cash to, to kick around, okay, good. I think. So, All right, here we go. So, so moving on to the Memorex. Yes, yeah, so this product. is the Memorex Party Cube CD. And now this is a bit of a different story here. This one right here is very boxy and that's, that's for a reason. So again, we've got, uh, the, we've got the iPod uh, charging here and uh, we've got some okay sound here. It's, it's not really earth shattering again, um, but you know, you can Turn it up. So again, the problem with most of these is a little bit of tinniness on, on the sound. So, but I guess you could take it and carry it around. You know, it's got like yeah. a little uh, handle on yeah. here. Yeah, that's the one nice thing about this is you know, unplug the this thing and then just carry it around with you. It's not, it's got a built-in battery that is designed to last uh, for a few hours. As you can see it's got speakers on the back as well and some other inputs that you can use. So. Uh, Again, it has your radio, it has the input on the back for other things like your Android phone, for example, and it's got the iPod dock. Uh, on this, it does have a slightly adjustable uh, uh, thing here, so you can actually brace uh, the iPod here if it's a different size. And the one neat feature about this one, it's called the Party Cube CD, and it's called that because it's got a CD player in the top as well. What? What's that for? I don't understand. That's for playing those uh, shiny metal discs that used to be the rage uh, oh, 10 right. years ago. Yeah. So if you've got a big CD collection and you don't want to just uh, say goodbye to it completely, you can actually put in a CD in there and play that as well, which you don't see a lot of CD players these days, but this one is able That's to play right. them. That's cool. It's yeah. a little retro. A little retro. Good stuff. Right. And then finally, so. this really 
high tech looking white cubey thingy that looks very much like yeah, so an this, Apple accessory. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like an Apple accessory. And uh, we've talked about Sonos before in various places on Butterscotch. And this is the wireless dock. It's now just called the Sonos dock. Um, it is essentially a dock that connects wirelessly to your Sonos device. So if you do have a Sonos player in the house, you can set this up, you know, connect it to the Sonos system as usual, and then when you start playing something on here, it'll just start transferring wirelessly to whichever uh, Sonos player you choose. Right. So if you have that, it'll work. If you don't have a Sonos system already in place, this isn't going to do much for you, Good. except charge. And right. it's at $129.99. It's a fairly expensive charging solution. Wow. But when you have the Sonos system in place, it's, it's really good. I mean, you're going to be bringing your Sonos music in from elsewhere, but if someone else wants to bring in their iPod and just... Uh, so something like there. this iHome thing is 139 Yeah. And then this little device is 129 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's got the mm. Wi-Fi. It's got the Wi-Fi built in. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. So, right, I mean, well. th these ones don't have wireless transmitting capabilities. They're just players. We might let them get by with that. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. All right. So we have one more for well, you, sir. Let's, let's wait saving. for that. Let's take a break. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. But I'm well, I, just, I can't wait to I'm get to it. I'm just going to let you. Can, we, can you see this, Paul? If I just lift it a little bit? Just a little bit? Uh, a little bit. There you go. See? This is what we're going to show you after the break. Look how cool it a is. Little, a little blurry. It's a little yellow. And we're going to keep it blurry so that people don't know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so, so let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to show you that cool blurry yellow thing because it's kind of the monstrous version of this. Hmm. I wonder why he said that. All right. We'll, uh, we'll be back uh, after this message. Welcome back to Lab Rats. Well, as we promised, we're going to show you a monstrous version of all these uh, docks. And uh, so let's, should we pull them up? Yeah, let's pull them up. Oh, oh my god. Oh, so exciting. Look, yellow. The yellow beasts, yellow monsters. Yes. So who makes these, Sean? Monster. Oh, surprise. Yes. The guys that make overpriced cables. Yeah, so this is uh, called the Clarity HD. And uh, you're thinking overpriced cables. Well, this one, you can, you can judge, I guess, after playing and listening to one of these, whether they're overpriced. Uh, they're right. 750 So up in the... $750. $750 okay, good, for, the, for the pair. For the pair, yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, you know... Does it come with the iPad, the iPod? It doesn't come with no, the iPod, okay. right. but it does Let's come with uh, handles up at the top that so you can... Yeah, you handles grip. are very expensive to build, by the way, yeah. so, you know. Um, notice that the other ones didn't come with handles because they're very expensive yeah. to manufacture. And it does come with a, a little remote, too. Not necessarily the, the biggest, most... Uh, well-designed remote in the world, but yeah. whatever. Th this this is a thing of beauty design-wise, I think. Um, it sounds pretty good too. So I mean, we can we can play. Well, that, yeah, that's going to be the proof, right? So okay. all joking aside, let's let's hear them. All right. So play this. Push play. I think all these remote controls are a waste of time, really. So let's just play something here. So a little bit of uh, a little bit craft work here. Downstairs probably hate us now. I take it back. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. So the, the nice thing about Monster is you can say what you like about uh, about their quality and, and all of that with their price. But when it comes to anything with a dance beat, it's, and not, a the lot of bass, it's not the quality I have an issue with. It's yeah. their uh, it's their marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. So I mean, it, it does sound very good though, and yeah. um, you know, for the price, the design, and it, it's worth noting that uh, on the back here we do have. Uh, a few extra inputs here, so you have the ability to have a mixer in, TV audio in, so you can actually use this as your TV uh, audio uh, as well. So just oh yeah, out, out from your uh, TV home theater into this and use that as optical? your optical or just uh, uh, no optical, but it does have a place for your computer, and it does have a wireless module here as well, so you can actually get the, another thing from them that allows you to uh, use wireless uh, to control it. So, and a bit of trim up here for adjusting your frequency level. If you, if you really want to play with that, it just softens it a little bit to, in certain frequencies. So there you go. And, and, wow. And a big, long cable here so that you can actually put them in different places. Is, is the cable included? The cable is included. Oh, my God. <laughs> All the value of it is in, in the cable. cable. Is, it gold, is it gold-plated? Uh, no. <laughs> Not that I can see. Anyways. All right, cool. And yeah, we, we joke about Monster, but it, it is a nice thing. 
yeah, if no. you have the money for it. Now, it's probably going to be hard to hear the sound quality, you know, yeah. given that you l listen to the same thing over the same source, but I can tell you that these guys are absolutely gorgeous. The sound is pristine, so maybe it's worth $750. And cables are included. And the cables are included. How exciting is that? All right, good job. Good, good, good job, Sean. Um, these come in different colors, too? Yeah, this uh, comes in uh, yellow and red that I've seen, and probably more down the road. I'm yeah, guessing. I would imagine. Okay, good. Thanks so much. All right, so up next is our clip of the week, and uh, in that is, uh, I think you did a how do I on the Sonus, uh, how yeah. Sonus works. Yeah, so we showed off the dock here without actually showing the player, so we figured we'd take a look at the player as well, so you can see if you're not familiar with Sonus, exactly what it is, so. Cool, well let's take a look at that. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. You'll go through the usual process of finding the application in the store of your choice, and then you'll install it. Once it's done installing, you'll tap on the app to open it. Once you've launched it, it'll give you an option to set up your Sonos system now. It'll give you a warning screen about setting up a new system, but since we've already done that, we're going to hit Next. It'll ask you to tap on one of the buttons on your devices to connect it to your existing Sonos system. So you'll need to make sure that your iPhone or iPad or your Android device is connected to the same Wi-Fi network that your Sonos system is already plugged into. Welcome back to Labrat. So if you enjoyed that clip, you can see the whole series uh, at this URL on the screen. Zip on over to butterscotch.com, check that out. Uh, you did how many parts was it? It was six parts. So six far, parts, yeah. right. So on how to actually buy, install, and use your Sonos uh, sound system. Very cool. Good work. Good. All right. So uh, up next, picture time, our favorite part of the show. So how many pictures do we have this week? We have three. Three yeah, You pictures. haven't done the dance yet. Picture time, picture time, picture time, picture time. All right. Let's do it. You have uh, received your reward here. The yes. first picture is uh, from our uh, viewer, Carl, who has uh, a couple of cats. And this right is here... Is this two or one cat? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good question. This right here is the first of the cat. Juliet. Juliet. What, did he, what did Juliet eat? I like a small raccoon? I don't know. I don't know. Juliet mm. definitely is, uh, is um, well put together. Let's put it that way. So, <laughs> but, uh, anyways. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She is gorgeous. Yeah. So Juliet also has a friend, mm -hmm. and that's Romeo. And Romeo, huh? And you know what happens when you put them together, of course. Yes. Romeo and Juliet. Juliet. I got it. There oh, you go. Shakespeare, be damned. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic pictures. Thanks so much. Who is this from? This was from Carl. Oh, from Carl. Okay, good. Thank you, Carl. Great, great pictures. Uh, oh, wow. I love seeing people's cats. It's hilarious. And that's a, I, I want to actually, I want to turn Juliet into like a screensaver or something. That's just brilliant. Can make. The legs wiggle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, cool. Good work. So if you want to send your pictures of your cats or your rats or your grandma or anybody else uh, and have it show up on the show, then you can email it too. If you had your cats gold-plated, you might have to call them Monster Romeo and Monster Juliet at labrass.tv. <laughs> I think that's the best one in a while. It's already good. Yeah. Okay, now you could send, if you want, really wanted to get us, so you could email the shorter version of it, which is? Feedback at labrass.tv. And we have a little announcement before we wrap the show today to let you know that uh, because of the Mayan calendar predicts the end of the world in 2012, we are now going to, we're going to wind down lab rats, you know, before, well, in fact, the Mayan calendar predicted the end of the world. I think they predicted the end of lab rats, but they're just they? off by a bit. They're off, off by a few months. Yeah. So sad to say that we're going to wrap up the show on our 300th episode, which is coming up uh, in, a, in a few weeks, time towards the end of 2011. And uh, so if you want to get your pictures on the show, if you want to send in your tributes, if you want to send in uh, anything about uh, how you feel about Lab Rats, and we're going to feature it on our final show. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can email that to feedback at labrats.tv. That's right. Yeah, and send us your favorite moments, for sure. Maybe we'll put a little compendium of the favorites. The favorite moments together. So. Yeah, OK, good. All right, so uh, that's episode 300. And so you have lots of time between now and December uh, 2011 to, uh, to see that. And uh, we're just going to be winding up the show. It's just about, about time to call it a day. You know, we've, we've made, been making this show for six years now. And we're now starting to focus very hard on mobile and that sort of thing at butterscotch.com. And so uh, it's time for us to do other projects. Yeah. We're not going away. We're still at butterscotch.com. It's just the show Lab Rats will. Yeah. Coming to an end at episode 300. Yes, and this is why we have uh, the, the clip of the week at the end of each uh, show, is, uh, so you can see all the other things we do, and now you'll be able to see us at those things as well. So I'll be doing How Do I, and uh, you'll be popping up on our 60-second apps, mm -hmm. more, like, more, more likely than not. So Yeah, a couple of new projects coming up, too, yeah. in the, in next year. All right, so uh, thanks for watching this week. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here showing you our docs. If you weren't out there going, geez, I'd like better sound out of my iPod. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready?